Fatullah is so huge that it's very difficult to understand except only to understand when you are in the presence of a Sultan, a Wali. Yesterday, in the previous sessions, we spoke about Abdul Rahim al Baghri being the presence of Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Uzbuwali and how much he tried Abdul Rahim al Baghri, but in all his questions, he, he failed without submission. And Awliya Allah, they have stories with their followers in order that the others will learn. Without stories, a human being can't understand. That's fair. They like stories. Allah knows what mind has put on human being. So they like all kind of stories. If you want to give them knowledge, people cannot understand. When you give a story, people understand. Mind is small. Limited. Limited. Your mind is limited. You know mine. <laughs> Completely. Of empty. And these stories that happens between Murid and student uh, and Sheikh are a type of the lowest that can happen in order the student can understand. Because the worry goes down all the way to the level of the student. So it's like cartoons. You know cartoons? You watch cartoons? So stories of Awliya Allah with their students are like cartoons. People will be interested. No story, no interest. If you speak day and night about Azamatullah, greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't stay in your mind. You stay a story, it's always there. What is the evidence in Holy Quran? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين وي نحن نقص وي narrate to you the best of stories Ahsan al-Qasas because Allah doesn't like except the best so that's why when we said Allah doesn't look at dirty of, dirtiness of a human being because Allah likes always Ahsan, the best He doesn't look at the worst so His mercy is huge that He doesn't look at what his servants are doing from bad, he looks at them what they are doing of good. That is a mercy. So he said, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ رَصَصِيهِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرَانِ We narrate to you the best of stories in which we have revealed to you that Holy Quran, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi So, the Holy Quran is full 
of story and incident that relate to a story. So today, we begin the discussion, the story of one of the of Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Rajduwani with his one of his one of the ulama his name is Ubaybullah al Amawi. And it says by date on the date of twenty one of Muharram the year 510. Sayyidina, Ubaidul, Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Ghuzduwani was sitting with his followers for Khatm al Khajakan, for the, to do the Khatm. He is the head. He is the Khalifatullah on the Khatm. And the origina originality of the Khatm came, as Awliya Allah they mentioned, where Shah Sahib? In the, in the cave, when Prophet Sallallahu was migrating from Mecca to Medina. There in that cave, Ghar al where Prophet وسلم, was hiding from the unbelievers, they are coming to, to kill him. There was one of the wisdoms, secrets of that cave is the beginning of the first Khatm al Khan Zikrullah that has taken place by the leadership of Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Rajduwani that he received his Khilafa on that from Prophet, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conduct Khatm al Khan. So in that Came, as you know, Prophet وسلم, after the snake was eating the leg of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq, and then Prophet stopped it. And all of you, I think many of you know that story. If you don't know it, go get it from the internet or from the Lakshman book. There, Prophet وسلم, Allah ordered him to invite all prophets to appear and all awliya Allah to appear and all Naqshbandi souls to appear. So the Naqshbandi souls, if if we want to call them Naqshbandi, you can call them whatever you want. Like in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, called Siddiqiyya. In the time of Sayyidina Abu Yazid, it was called Taifuriya. Tariqa. It was called Naqshbandi. Well, it is, was spread by Sayyidina Shah Naqshbandi, East as West, as it is called today Haqqaniya, because it spread East and West. It's also called Mujaddidiyya because Sayyidina Ahmad al farouk spread it. So Baghdadiyya, Khalidiyya, you go to Far East today, you find people, they say, oh, we have Khalidiyya Tariqa, which is Sayyidina Khalid al Baghdadi, spread it East and West. So in every century it's called something. In that cave, Sayyidina, the Prophet ordered Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Ujduwani to be the leader, leader of this originated secret of that way that followers of it is going to continue till day of judgment. 
they order all Naqshbandi souls to appear and Sayyidina Abdul Khalik al-Rajdwani led the zikr there. Anyone appeared in that cave is going to appear in dunya. Even one time he came to a Naqshbandi Khatm al Khajakan means he is part of that appearance in the cave of Qar al-Sawf. Big one. No. One time, one person comes and sit in a khatm that relate to Sayyidina Shah al Naqshband all the way to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq to Prophet. He is going, this is a sign that he was in that cave. In any under any guidance of any one, it's not restricted to Hakani branch. It is all branches that they call themselves Nakshbandi, they are that word will pull them inside that cave. There are thousands of branches. But where is the secret? Is that something else? So when you say I am an Akshbandi follower, like I met one from very important one, a politician. A very important, very highly political person in a in an Arabic government where you don't find Sufi order except now they are slowly, slowly, it's opening up. He said to me, I am Naqshbandi. Oh, can I say? It's forbidden to say. From which year? This year. Anyone who say, I am following Naqshbandi Tariqa, whatever Sheikh is, must his soul be present in Karistan. And the leader of that, of all of them, Khalifa Tullah, the, the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that khatam by, through the authority of Prophet, he said, Na'bul Khalifa Ghuzduwani. Allah gave him that specialty. He knows all his, all the souls by name and what they are doing in their life and what's going to happen for them, he knows every smallest detail that they are going to, from the day of promises, till they go to paradise in the day of judgment. He knows all their details, how long they are going to live, how many breaths they are going to breathe, how, how they are going to do in their lives, all of that, he knows it. And when they are leaving dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him, because these awliya are free to move in barza. Send him to be present at the death of that person to make sure that he talqeen al khatam. Talqeen means to put on your tongue. He put on the tongue of everyone that secret of the zikr of everyone in that cave. And that's don't think it takes time. That will be by shrinking time and space. How he cannot do when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him, ask them they are hearing. No. How he cannot do that when Allah when they said, Ya Abdul Khalik, take your stick and go to Maru. <coughs> his, his village. 
go to that area and there is a huge rock you hit your stick on it and when he went and hit his stick that rock cracked and waterfalls was coming they are till today people drink from that water He said, Ya Abdul Khalik, your responsibility is from now till day of judgment. I am going to create from every drop of this water an angel. And your responsibility is to give a name to every angel different from the others. No, no, you cannot give, you cannot give two angels same name. They must be different names. In dunya you, you want to call a child, and when a child comes you want to call a name. There are too much resemblance in names today. No? You say Khaled, thousands of Khalid. Uh -huh. You say Sahib, thousands of Sahib. You say Hashem, thousands of thousands of Hashem. Thousands of names for same for different people. Thousands of one name for different people. So he, he was ordered to give angel, to give these angels name that they are not similar, different. And imagine from a waterfall, every drop Allah creating an angel, Sayyidina Abdul Khalik has to give a name for that angel till the day of judgment. And all these angels will be divided in different portions to different people. Their praises will be written for those who are in Naqshbandi order. Means those who are, let us call it, in the Siddiqiyya, inheriting from Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Ali, because Naqshbandi comes from two sources, from Sayyidina Abu Bakr and from Sayyidina Ali, and they meet in Sayyidina Jafar al -Sadiq. both of them. So the reality, Sayyidina Ja'far al-Sadiq, is the two wings. He, he, he combined through him the two sources of knowledge came to him, and then one, they went one source. From two places came and went from one. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Salman Faris. Jafar. Sayyidina Jafar al Sadiq, the fourth one in the Silsila. Then he gave to Sayyidina Abu Yazid al Sadiq. So he has to name them and divide them into different on different souls their praises would be written for that abd who is following let's say from Sayyidina Jafar al Sadiq all the way up. So Awliya Allah are not and we said last time that Sayyidina ja uh, Abdul Khalik al Ujduwani, whenever he wants to do zikr, he goes where? In the well. Why in the well? Because Shaitan cannot approach water. He goes down, he dip himself, immerse himself in the well, make zikr, then he comes up quickly to breathe. Then he goes down, then goes up. And the well is minus zero degrees, it's always cold. 
Now we take shower with cold water, we shake. He's doing zikr then. How many, how, how many, ta uh, many times a day he does zikr? Five thousand, ten thousand. Abdul Khalik was the one. If he, if he gives names to uh, to angels, and every angel is a different name, he is. How many millions of angels is giving in 24 hours? Means how many millions of zikr he is doing in 24 hours? Subhanallah, awliya Allah, how much they carry. So then they were sitting at the date of 21 of Muharram, 510 Hijrah, with his followers sitting for Khatm al Khan with the secret of the Khatam, one man came. His name Ubaidullah al-Amawi. He is from Sham. And you know Sham at that time was the fountain of knowledge. Sham and Baghdad. They don't call themselves Abdullah, you know, no. but they call them. They call Ubaid. You know the difference between Abd and Ubaid? Abd is servant. Ubaid is the servant of servant of servant of servant. Means he is the lowest of servants. They feel shy to call themselves Abd. Now you will say Abdul Hamid or Abdul Hafiz or Abdul We don't say, we eat the Abd and we leave Hamid. Is not? No. Razak. It's haram. It's not accepted. You have, this is all Allah's names, beautiful names and attributes. You have to put the first Abd, servant of Allah, servant of Al-Hamid, servant of Al-Razzaq, servant of... Now they eat it then. Abdul Karim, what they call him? Karim. Allah is Al-Karim. Call him Abdul Karim. Abdul Ghani. Don't say Ghani, they call Ghani. You don't hear that? Mm. Who gave you the authority to call that person? Ghani, Allah is Al Ghani. It's good your name is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that Ubaidullah Al Amawi, servant of servant of servant of servant. He was Qutbul Ulama. Not the meaning of Qutbul Awliya and the meaning of Qutb, but he was the famous, the famous of scholars in his knowledge. So he came and sitting with Adam. He's in the Majlis. And as soon as he entered, Sayyidina Abdul Khalq al Wajduwani stopped the zikr and looked at him, and no one knows him uh, from the Murid. But Sayyidina Abdul Khalif was the one he, through his spiritual power he said Ya Ubaidullah al amawi come near me and why? Anzil uh, respect Anzil nasa manazilahum keep give everyone his level of Treat people according to their levels. It's alim. He 
hands to Aurelia, they show respect to people. So he brought him. Sit your place is here. Sit with me. He said to him, Ya Ubaidullah, now you tell me what you what came to your heart as soon as you entered I read I, I was able to receive what was in your heart say it in front of them he was surprised because he is alim he respected the sheikh but not like today ulama ulama today or they don't know anything of that spirituality they know but they hide it they, they don't understand how people can read the hearts of others like a crazy one crazy ulama you are not understanding if Chinese sorry <laughs> if Chinese and Hindus and Buddhists with respect to them they can read hearts of people Awliya Allah they can read hearts of people they can send messages from heart to heart they call it what? telepathy you know Simon telepathy sent telephone messages from heart to heart Awliya Allah cannot do that they don't think about it today because so much today with their knowledge they think themselves they reach the top so they don't have that so they think no one can have that because they are the highest Kutbul Ulama, the highest pole of Ulama. Scholars. Uh, Pole of scholars. Pole of scholars. Oh, he said he doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Poles of scholars. They reach, they reach the highest level. When they don't, they don't have this particularity, then they don't believe that exists. But it exists. It's existing. One time in Damascus there was, was famous wali called Sheikh Ahmed Harun. You know the story? I said it many times. That time when they, he was sitting with his followers and in Damascus. And there was one in Aleppo that is important that he will come to that. They need him in that meeting. They have something important. They want to send someone, because they don't have telephones at that time. Only might be very high official people, they have a telephone or two in the country. So they have to send someone Aleppo, which is 500 kilometers, to go and tell him to come. Or they sent to him at that time telegram. You know telegram? Huh? Yeah. Morris. Morris. This you know. So yeah, yeah. punch. He said, no, 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 no. Wait. You open his belt. You have the belt. Open his belt. Put on his ear and his mouth. <laughs> his belt. And uh, the iron where the iron of the belt. And speaking. Oh, so and so, come now from Aleppo. We need you here. <laughs> Everyone sitting with him. <laughs> <laughs> what he is doing. Four hours, 
Later, it takes four hours, knocking at the door, coming. He said, oh, my chef, he called me. Everyone was surprised. He called him with from his belly. <laughs> <laughs> Under his belly. <laughs> to show them that, look, even that bird can speak. Awliya <laughs> Allah, not easy. So don't sit in front of them with a bad thought. It's dangerous. That's why it's preferable to say salam and run. But people, they don't understand that. They think, no, if they sit late and day and night in front of the sheikh, is good. No, it's not. It's not. Because they have heart. They have different state, trance in their lives during the day. When the trance comes, you cannot sit there. They will burn you with them. Because they are burning in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot approach. But there are tufailiyin, you know tufailiyin? Parasites. You know parasite lives on others. Mosquitoes. Huh? So mosquitoes, people are mosquitoes. You don't call them. They call them, oh, they are at the door of the sheikh, very important, they respect them so much. For Maulana, we respect them, but they are mosquitoes. They know themselves there on the internet. People know them. Too many mosquitoes, you see them flying. <laughs> and mosquitoes, where they go? A black fly, this bench over there, this one. Right. Flies, where they go? On dirt. These are dirty people. <laughs> Why you ask me? Okay. You didn't encounter one of them? Too many. Too many. So Sayyidina Abu, Sayyidina Abaydullah, Sayyidina Abdul Khalid al Rujdawani knows this is a big scholar and carry this high level of education. <coughs> Knowledge shows him respect. Bring him, sit near me. He said to him, What, what came to your heart? Say it now. He said, Ya Sayyidi, Antum Jawasis al Kulub. You are the spies of the heart. It cannot hide anything from you. Today, you have agencies. Too many. This agency, this agency, this agency. Or to do what? To look if someone is going to do a conspiracy against a country or a Islam. No. <laughs> Allah is very simple. They look, they, they read it. It's ready for them in the hearts of people. That's why they like to avoid appearances. They like to be secluded because they see the dirtiness in the heart of people, how it is flying from one to another, and how much conspiracy is going on. They don't like that. They say, okay, we back up. Look, Maulana backed up now. Maulana was before with everyone. Now, as time approaching to more and more of what Prophet has pred predicted of appearance of revenge, heavenly revenge, not dunya revenge, not go and fight with weapon. Allah doesn't need weapon. Allah sent something that people will never imagine. On them. Look at H1 and one now. And one H1 or H1 and one. H1 and one. What is it? H1 and one or N1 H1? <laughs> Whatever. They change the name. They put it H1 and one, but it is, it is influenza of pigs. They don't want to say that. They are worried. 
because in Egypt they killed the pigs. Oh, 30,000. Oh, the whole world stood up when they killed millions of sheep. No one said anything. When they killed millions and millions of chickens, anyone said anything? When they killed the cows, anyone said anything? As soon as they touched the pigs, <laughs> everyone crying because they are pigs. They are similar. They eat dirt chains. They said, no, don't worry, eat pigs as much as you like. It's no okay. Why, why they didn't do that for the sheep and the cows and the chickens and the birds? They, they burned them. They, they, are, they cannot. So in any case, Awliya Allah, they backed up. Because too much dirtiness in the world now. So now everyone is afraid from Ajwar and one. Allah sent one small mosquito, a fly, make all the dunya, all the people are worried around the world. It's around the world. It's like a plague. And now they are saying, if you get it, you are not going to count it anymore. It's out of hand. Of course, if Allah wants it out of hand, we can't stop it. We ask Allah protection. Mawlana said, anyone who wants protection from that has to keep ablution 24 hours. Whenever he loses ablution, immediately another one. Whenever he goes, I go to sleep. When you sleep, you sleep. But Allah will save you if you have ablution because you are clean. Don't lose. Don't stay without ablution. If you are in a place that you cannot take ablution, so simple, Hawaii to Tayammum, Sunan of Tayammum, beach three on the floor, on the ground, on the dirt, on the clothes, Allah Afur Rahim. Rub your face, make your hand, this is finished. So he said, tell me what happened in your heart, what came to your heart now. And we leave it for tomorrow. It's already for tomorrow. He every every day he has a new computer and this poor guy, his computer not working, crashing, and look he's writing by hand. And he doesn't give him a computer. <laughs> Where well, Amar didn't give you a computer? Computer Allah gave to you yesterday. You got your small one. Not yet? Now when you see him, take it to him. What happened to the small computer? I said you to turn it. And then I want to see this.